My art form is music. When I was growing up, learning to play the violin, I never, ever dreamed that one day I would be playing as much as I do in front of other people. Some of my best friends did not know that I played the violin until we were, you know, grown up. I'll never forget somebody I grew up with, really. She came over to our house at Christmas time once, and my mom asked me to, you know, to play a Christmas song or something on the violin. And this friend of mine, her jaw just dropped to the ground, and I, I thought, oh, it was really that bad, was it? <laughs> And she says, I didn't know you play the violin. And I'd been playing for years and years, you know, so I was very private about that. And it's Jasper that afforded me the opportunity to kind of come out of the closet, as it were, in terms of playing the violin. I didn't start out planning to become a violin teacher. I don't know why, but I think I grew up with this notion that you don't become a musician. I mean, my mom brought me to violin lessons for years, but to become a musician, like, you know, quote unquote, that wasn't really in the cards. Somebody saw me play and said, oh, I didn't know you played, and I've always wanted to learn to play the violin. Will you teach me? So I said, uh, I'm not a violin teacher, but sure, I'll try. And that's kind of how it started, and one became two, became three, and now I am a violin teacher, so what I would be sharing with my students is you know learning to do something that that makes your life richer and it's my passion it's what I love to do it's it's a high I mean I, I just get a high from playing for people and actually I have to pinch myself sometimes that when I was growing up learning to play the violin maybe one of the reasons why I wasn't very public about it is because I just thought that people don't like the violin there were a few factors in that one was my siblings who teased me to death when I was learning to play the violin in the first few years you know they'd be squeak 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 so I tried very hard to not make the squeak 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 and I thanked them later in life because I think that their teasing made me play better I think that arts and culture gives to a community a life it gives a community uh, cohesion and creativity outlet. I mean, we all get inspiration from not only our surroundings, but the people around us. But I have to say that, you know, Mildred Flanagan is one of those people who has inspired me over the decades. And Doug Clement. At first, I mean, I felt like I was, you know, so vulnerable, you almost feel like you're naked, you know? And then he just always encouraged me. He says, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that sounds good. Play a little louder, play a little louder. <laughs> you know, we know now through scientific study that we have a, a brain center for language. Now we also know that we have a brain center for music. There are connections that are made when we listen to music and when we make music. It is incredible what they are now learning about our brain, that it is so primal. Music is as important as food for us, it really is. What does music feed? It, music feeds a, a hunger in us that is like a hunger for food. That, why does music make us cry? Why does music make us laugh? Why do, music, uh, why do movies have music? If you shut off the music in, in a movie, it would be a completely different experience. You, it, it wouldn't have any of that emotion. So it feeds emotions in us and these are part of what drives us. I have a memory of a poem that I wrote to a girl. First girl I ever kissed in grade seven. One of the lines from the poem is, I remember this. I almost don't even want to recite it out loud. My heart is like an eagle soaring all around. And when it comes to see you, land swiftly on the ground. My house, though, my house was always filled with poetry. There was poetry in my kitchen that I can remember. And every morning eating breakfast, I would read the poetry on the walls. I know a lot of writers try to avoid cliché, but I love the idea of being able to take cliché thought or concept or, or uh, couplet, if it is, and kind of take it somewhere else. What does it feel like? Um, it's kind of a little bit of a lightning bolt in my mind. And I think, will it work? Will it not work? And I just know. Instantaneously, it's like, either is it worth writing down or is it not worth writing down?
Yeah, it's kind of taken me in different places I never expected, but I don't want to stop. Actually, right now I have a friend in Vancouver who she contacted me about six months ago who wants to do a kid's book of poetry together. And she's a tremendous artist, so I'm very excited to work with her over the winter. I feel like the, I see the world in a bit of a transparency. I try to look at things past what they are, and, and at the same time, I kind of recognize that, and then I look back and I see the face value of something. On its own, life sucks. You work, you come home, you do your dishes, you clean your floor, you go to bed. A lot of people do that and they hate their lives. I'm the same person, I still do those things. I wash my floor, I do my dishes, but while I'm doing it, I'm singing songs and I'm writing poetry in my mind the whole time. And if it wasn't for art, we wouldn't have archeological sites, we wouldn't have books, we wouldn't have songs, we wouldn't have dance, we wouldn't have theater, we wouldn't have film. But it's definitely inside of us, it's integral. I don't think we can escape it because even if you don't create art, you still appreciate art through music. And I don't know too many people who don't like music. You know, I go to the JAG and I see art from people from all across the world in one room. The influx of humans that we have coming here from all over the world that really makes that huge difference. I remember one morning waking up and checking my email and the word of the day was zeitgeist. And I had no idea what the word was. And I read the definition and the idea was the concept of being able to recreate a moment by word or by emotion. To be able to emotionally evoke a feeling that once was. So that's where I go. I go to the place where I was that the initial thought happened or the initial feeling happened and then I'm able to recreate that feeling with words. I took a 100 level grammar class at Algonquin College in Ottawa um, and that was it. I wanted to go, actually it was the whole, the whole thing was supposed to be a creative writing course that I was taking, um, but I ran out of money. I feel like it's one of those things that you don't need to. You don't need to go to school to be able to paint. If you have the ability, you have the ability. If you can write, you can write. If you can rhyme, you can rhyme. We've had 300,000, 250,000 years of human history. We had art from the dawn of human history. We have prehistoric, we have art predating humans. Why do we need a college degree to create art? You don't. My earliest recollection is from five years old. I had a pencil in my hand. Say, growing up in England when I was a kid, <clears throat> there was no TVs, of course. So I used to, like I say, I used to draw a lot. And a lot of it was um, like fantasy kind of stuff, which I still do. And um, my mum and dad also used to get me at Christmas time Buffalo Bill albums. So I've always been drawn to um, cowboys and Indians, if you want to use that term. Obviously, we're living in Jasper since 78. It's been all inspiring just looking at the landscape. Right now, my artwork has gone from photorealistic, which is what I used to do, to I call my stuff now abstract realism. I've always been an admirer of the Impressionist, and um, I think that's what led me into painting along those lines. I don't paint from photographs at all. What I do, I go out with my sketchbook and I'll do a line drawing or a pencil drawing right on the spot, go home and paint from it. But most of the time what I really prefer doing is taking out my little sketch box that I built um, and um, paint directly on location. We need art and culture we need in our lives. We have to have it. I think what they need to do is possibly re-examine the um, education system and start with the little munchkins and get them more involved with art to try and instill it back into the culture that we live in. People could look at the artwork and they could re relate it to their own culture. I think it's, uh, it's a personal thing. It gives you, to me, it's inner tranquility. I feel at one with the environment. If you can walk along the trail, it makes you realize how insignificant we are on the planet and the majesty, majesty of the mountains and the environment that we live in. And it, it's worthwhile preserving and um, it's part of our heritage, part of our culture. It doesn't matter whether it's um, two-dimensional art like I do, theater, writing, whatever, it doesn't matter. 
as long as you, if you get involved with a group who have got similar interests, and you know, you, you get a sense of community. I love talking to people about art and trying to help them and mentor, especially little munchkins. I love doing that with little kids when I'm outside painting. And I always try and encourage them, and I think that's what we need to do. It's just a sense of being, you know, within the community, and it's a good thing to get involved with. I always tell people that's my religion out there, and that's what I believe in. Painting, um, dance, music, doesn't matter. We needed, there's something in the human form, and I'm, I don't know any much about human uh, thoughts, patterns and everything, but there's something inside of us what makes us want to do things like that. And I think we need that um, as individuals. Um, like I say, I think it, the world would be a sorrier place without any arts or culture of any sort. I like to recycle things. Uh, so I do paintings, obviously. I've been drawing since I'm, I'd say, three, four years old. So that's what I'm comfortable with. And then things arrive around me, cardboard, plastic, metal. I'd like to work it a little more. And uh, I try to work things out with that and make it creative. Try to put life in something that would definitely uh, end up in a garbage. I see already the final product in my head. The rest is how long it's going to take to get there. I don't care how long it's going to take, but I need to get there because it's, it's possible. It's in my head. I see that we can have a crazy final product. It, it has to come out. It's there. I guess there is a little spirit in there and it's hidden and I feel I'm the only one around who can show it, bring it to life and make it seen. I wasn't sure how much we were needed in society but people need to travel, they need to get out, they need to disconnect and we can give them that. If we can give them that, that is a, a happy break. I feel useful. I feel like I can help people. I feel useful and in, in, I, I have a place within people. And uh, that, is, that is very important to find a place. Very often people are seeing just one perspective as a group, as a society, just one thing. And it's very important that we have different views of things. We go through the same things over and over again through hundreds of years. Everything is being repeated with different costumes, different houses. Um, and I think art and culture, we are able to have a piece of the culture and being able to um, freeze it. So I think art definitely brings uh, not necessarily happiness, but reactions inside people. And we need those. We need, we need stirrups. We need to move things around. We were very encouraged to create. Both of my parents, my brothers, my sister. And then where I grew up in Quebec, uh, we are quite creative people. I've always tried to follow uh, artistic communities and that's why I end up in Jasper. I believe, I feel I fit here. Um, I don't really find a place in the big cities. It's a bit too big, I'm lost in there. Uh, but small communities, I feel that uh, people do notice bursts of, of arts. I love the idea that photography gets me out because uh, just walking a trail sometimes without a purpose is hard to motivate yourself. So if you have a camera in your hand, you can actually get out on the trail and you have a reason for being there. So that kind of helps. Um, of course, it's so inspirational living in Jasper that you can't help but just want to go out and experience it. When I look at a picture, it, it, uh, it's generally 
the initial emotional response that it develops within yourself that captures me. I don't plan shots. I uh, check the wind, oh, let's go that way, and then see where it goes, and then just wander in the woods somewhere and just say, Mother Nature, inspire me, and that usually what's, what's happened. Uh, the photograph is, is uh, definitely a powerful medium. It can, uh, like I say, bring an emotional response just, just by the viewing of it alone. And if you can generate that in, into a viewer, then uh, I think you've really captured something good. I'm trying to get a little more knowledge in me. I mean, it's a big learning curve, obviously. Not every shot you take is great, but when you do get a good one, you really uh, feel good about it. When Mary Schaefer came through here with her plates and they had it on the horseback, and she only had a, a limited amount of plates to choose from, and she had to really pick and choose the shot that she wanted to take. Uh, and then when she took it, she never really knew what she had until she brought it back to uh, civilization and had it developed again. We really have it easy in the digital age. I think it's very valuable for society to have, have some sort of outlet that people can, can use to uh, express themselves. Every image generates a different response from the viewer. We each see something different in the image. We all seem to have a, an innate feeling within us to express ourselves somehow. You can make anything beautiful if you look at the right spot. Is, uh, I'm more aware now of, of the little things. Like Before I used to just walk through the forest and get to point B from A to B, and, and now I look along the path and down under the hedges and uh, in the flowers and in the dirt because there's things there that I never noticed before, but now I have a different eye. Sometimes when I'm out in the middle of nowhere, and it's safe enough that I can put headphones in, I'll be listening to my music or a song that I'm working on, and it will actually put me in the mood to, to make me look where I wouldn't normally look, um, to feel a certain way that I wouldn't normally feel. That helps you find that shot that, that uh, again, you would overlook. But for the most part, it's all about you when you're out there. Um, how it makes you feel, what you see, where you're driven to go uh, to take that next shot. It, uh, it's a tingle, it's a growl, it's a pain. Um, and when it feels good, you get warm fuzzies all over. Uh, when it feels bad, you feel horrible and you don't want to do anything. Uh, such is life, I guess. That's welcome to the real world. When I started to dance, I was in about grade three, and I kept going for a few years, and then I stopped to pursue other activities, other like extracurriculars, and somehow something just brought me back to wanting to dance, and it's just been kind of my thing since. I think Nicole is quite the gem in Jasper. Uh, she brought something that other people might have been scared to introduce into the town and made it something where it's a place for youth to go and just express themselves through an art and she's an amazing coach and just a wonderful person in general. I'm so pleased to be her student and I love going to dance, it makes my day. Because I want to go to school for education to become a teacher, uh, I can see myself definitely doing it on the side while I'm in university and then having my degree in education I can go and teach dance if I'd like to and come back here or go to another small town where maybe they don't have dance and just introduce it there which would be nice. I think people dance because it's a way to use your body as more of something just to do other things. It's to express yourself and to feel the motion in music and it combines so many different arts together and it brings people together in communities and I think it's just a wonderful way of expressing yourself and just showing who you are through your own movement. When I dance and someone's watching me I'd like them to get goosebumps. I want them to feel what I feel. I want them to have something to relate to or something that they can see and bring into their own lives and just to show them how I'm feeling with the music and the song at that moment that I'm on stage in front of everyone. Dance gives me a sense of individuality, uniqueness. It gives me a way of expressing myself without having to use my words. It's like a metaphor for how I feel. I think a world without art would be the scariest place to live. I don't know what my life would be like without art and my dance. It's just, it's so opening and it, it lets everybody be who they are without judging. It's a great thing. Dance has taught me a lot about culture. It shows me that no matter where you are, you can 
dance and someone else will feel it. You can go to a different country and they all have their different kinds of dance, but it's still dance and it's still you and it's still the movement of your body to music and rhythm and it's, it's a beautiful thing that brings the world together, really. The first time I ever walked into a dance studio, I felt intimidated because I started so much later than everyone else and I was worried that everyone's gonna laugh at me because I don't know what I'm doing, everyone's going to judge me, but once you start, everyone's doing the same thing, everyone makes mistakes, but everyone's just there to dance and enjoy themselves, and it was a really great experience. I think I chose dance because I love moving, I love music. Both my parents love to listen to music, my dad's all about music, from different eras, my mom and her dancing, she loves it. We dance around together all the time, and it was just something that I really like to do. So class, dance class seemed like a pretty good option for my parents. I think having a culture scene in a community like Habitat for the Arts is amazing for giving opportunities to youth and adults and all ages to be able to have some way to express themselves and show who they are through the arts. I think arts is something that a lot of people grow to, grow to have a passion in and it really brings joy to people and opens people up to other people in the community. It's a very social thing. I think it just builds a very strong community. I sing and I dance and I, and I act, but I, it's more just who I am. I'm not afraid to take chances, I guess. It's acting. You get to play whoever you want every day. It's amazing. I love being other people. It's cool, you don't get to play. You can play a president, you can play the queen, you can play, I could be you. <laughs> it's really amazing to be able to share, share art with other people, share that with other people, because I think it affects other people. They get something out of it, so it makes me feel better about it. I think not coming from a city and coming from a small town in Jasper in a way has maybe humbled me. I don't see this as like a competition. I'm doing this because I love it. And if it doesn't work out, yeah, it would suck. It's what I love to do, but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna continue to do it on the side. I'm, not, I'm always gonna be doing this. I'm currently attending Grant McEwen's theater arts program. Dance is a core component of it too because you need to have stage presence so you learn everything about that. Um, and voice, like you, you inhabit yourself, you inhabit your body, it's everything, it's all of you knowledge. I, I'm just grateful to learn like anything that I can absorb. I, I, I want to continue to do this the rest of my life and anything that I can absorb and learn that's going to further me and make me do this longer then I will continue to do that because I just I love it. What do I want to be when I grow up? If I could do anything with theater or film or acting, singing, dancing, whatever in that kind of field, wherever I can be creative is what I hope to be. Arts makes you feel things that you never thought you could feel. It makes you cry, it makes you laugh, it makes you angry, it makes you question yourself, it makes you be confused, anything. It's a way for people to express themselves. The people that I'm in my program with, they're really strong people. They're strong-willed, they're determined, they're gutsy, they're willing to take risks, and that's what art's about. Art is about taking risks. It's about challenging yourself and challenging others. The people that I've worked with in Jasper have given me the stepping stones to be able to do this program. Like I wouldn't be as good of a dancer if I hadn't taken dance classes with Nicole Coble, or I wouldn't have been a good singer if I hadn't taken a choir lesson, for, like choir classes with Sue Deer years ago. Starting this theater company, Sonia DeLeo and I, when we, her and I got together and we figured out that this is what we wanted and everybody came and this actually happened, like it, and we did it. And to have been able to grow from when I went to film school to now, even high school to now, is just, it's all about what happened in Jasper during those four years. So everything that I learned from them and from people that I worked with, I take with me. It made me who I am now, what I can work on now to get better. It's not a free ride. If you really want this and you're determined and it's your dream and you know that you're going to be good at it and you know that you're going to succeed at it, you can feel it in your gut, you have that feeling, then do it. Go for it and push yourself because if you believe that it'll happen, it will happen.